All right, so we've covered index, create a store, show, and now it's time for edit and update. So basically we just want to update a listing. So let's start by creating a component first. In our listing folder, I'm going to create a new component and I will call it edit.view. Now this is going to be very similar to our create page. So I will copy everything from this component and paste it here and save it and I'll leave it as it is for now. Then let's open our show component, which we created in the previous video and go to this section that we reserved for edit and delete buttons. So I'm going to delete this text here. And first on the div wrapper, I'm going to add some classes. So padding left four and flex items center and some gap. Then within that, we will have an initial link so we can go to the edit page for the text, I just want to say edit, and then I want to add some classes. So this is our edit button, and I'm just adding some background color, rounded corners and padding all around. Now let's see which route we need to use. So going back to the terminal and listing our routes, we have a get route here that goes to listing and then the ID and then edit. The name of that route is listing edit. And of course the edit method in our listing controller is in charge. So we want to use this one and then pass down our listing ID to this route. So back to our show component, we want to provide the href for this link and bind it to the route function, then use listing.edit route. And as a second argument, we want to pass our listing ID. So now let's take a look at this button in our details page. So for example, this one, and we have our button here and we want to click on this and go to our edit page. So let's go back to the project and we can close the show component. We don't need this and go back to the listing controller and the edit method. So again, we want to return inertia render and our edit component. And we also want to send this listing as a prop to our component. So similar to what we did in the show method. All right, so this is our edit method and let's go back to the website and click on this link. We go to our form and we just have to adjust a few things, populate these input fields and handle the image. So let's do this, go back to our edit component and before creating a form instance, I'm going to define our props. And since we are going to use it in the script tag, I'm going to create a props variable, set this to define props and say, we are expecting a listing of type object like this. Now to populate our form, we can use this listing instead of these null values. So let's just start with the title. We want to set this to props listing dot title. Then I can copy this first part and just paste it here and use the property we need. So I'm just repeating this process with different values. And we want to keep the image as null in this component. Now let's go down to the markup and change a few things. We don't want to say new listing. We want to say edit listing for the title. Also say edit your listing. We need the error messages. And we need to submit this to a different route. But for now, let's just delete this whole thing. And we will come back to it in the next video where we want to handle the request. So for now, the form doesn't have any submit listener, then we don't need to change anything regarding these input fields. And for the button, instead of create, we want to say update, and we can also bind the disabled attributes to form processing. And in fact, we can do this for the create form as well. I forgot to do it in that component. So I'm just going to copy this and then open our create component and just paste it for this primary BTN. All right, so let's take a look at our edit form. And here it is, we have the values. Let's go back to the homepage and open, for example, this new listing and then go to edit. And of course we can see the values. Now let's talk about the image and we are rendering that section using our image upload component. So let's open this component and handle the preview if there is an image. So first we want to accept a prop. So let's say const prop and set this to define props. And I want to call this listing image like this, that is going to be a type string. So if we have this, we will use it. Otherwise we don't. For example, in our create page, we will not have a listing image, so we don't need to use it. And therefore it's going to be null. Now we want to replace the initial value of this preview variable to this listing image if it exists. So I'm going to create another variable and call it current image. And I will set this to a ternary operator. 
So first I want to check if our listing image exists. So if we do have that prop, then we will reach into our storage and then the path to that listing image. So again, we want to say props dot listing image. Now, if that doesn't exist, we will just return null. And now instead of setting the preview directly to null, we can use that current image. And now we just have to pass this listing image as a prop to our image upload component. So let's go back to the edit component. And down here we have image upload. We want to bind listing image to our listing dot image like this. So now if we go back to our website, and give it a reload there we have the image which belongs to this listing and if i click on it and upload a new one again we can see the uploaded image so this works the way we want and if we open any other listing like this one we have the current image if we go to the create page we will just see the default image because that listing image is null and everything is working the same way we can still see the preview now there's one more thing we need to talk about so on this edit page if i select an image like this and then I change my mind there is no way I can get back my default image and if I submit this then this new image will be submitted so we want to add an undo button here so we can put this back to the current image so let's go back to our image upload component and I'm going to create another variable after oversized image I would call this one show revert btn or undo btn doesn't matter and again we will set this to ref and initial value is going to be false then we want to scroll down to our markup and after our image i'm going to create a button or any other element we want so first i want to set the type of this to button to make sure we are not submitting a form and then we want to make this conditional using the if and bind it to that show revert btn then i'm going to add some classes here so I'm setting the position to absolute, adding some values to the top and right, some fixed height and width, and fully rounded display grid items center. So I want to have an icon as the content of this button, and that is rotate left. So it's just an icon that represents undoing an action. Now, since we are setting the position of this button to absolute, we need to make the container relative, which is this label. So on the label, I just want to add relative like this. And let's put this to true for a second so we can see the button. And here we have it. So when we click on this, we want to undo the image change. So first, we don't want to show this button. And we want to show it only if there is a change in that image container. So we are handling that using this image selected function. And when we register a change, we want to change this value to true so let's grab the value of that show revert btn and set it to true like this and now if we go back to our website select a new image there we have it now of course we want to click on that button and revert these actions so basically we just want another function that would do the opposite of what we are doing in image selected function so let's create one i would call this one revert image change and we will set this to an arrow function so first we want to hide the button again so we can set the value of show revert btn to false then we want to remove this preview so we can grab the preview and set the value to current image so again if there is an image we will use it otherwise it's going to be null we also want to set the oversized image value to false in case the selected image was an oversized image so we want to hide those error messages let's bind this function to this button we just created so maybe under this v if i can say at click use the revert image change function now let's test this out i'm going to change this for example to this beach image which is oversized and if i press undo then we go back to the image but you notice we get the pop-up and that is because of the bubble effect i think that's what it's called so we can simply add the prevent modifier to the click event so that bubble effect wouldn't happen and if i do this again for example this one and revert there we go it's working and even if it's an oversized image everything works properly now we still have a tiny problem and that is emitting this event but i can't show you the problem in this video because we have to handle it in our laravel backend 
but basically what we are doing here we are changing our form image in our edit component through this action and if we undo it we are not undoing that one so that is a problem and we will address that in the next video but for now everything is done with our edit form and even if we go to the create form and select an image we can still undo that and i think that is just an extra feature for the create so we can go to any listing and go to edit and edit our listing now in the next video we want to handle this request in our laravel application so let's do that next